Welcome to the Nerd Lag Game Club Podcast, the podcast where we play games instead of reading books. I'm Corey, and I'm joined by three party members today. Lauren. Hey. Tunza. What's up? And Amboy. Hey, everyone. In this episode of the Game Club, we discovered the lives of the people that enter our coffee shop, and we played Coffee Talk. Coffee Talk was released on January 29th, 2020, and was developed and published by Toge Productions. Toge Productions have developed other games such as Infectinator, Relic of War, and Days to Die. Have you played any of those games? Nope. Nope. Never heard of them. Me either, actually. <laughs> I just wanted to say Infectinator when I was looking at it. I was like, man, what a cool name. <laughs> Uh, before we get any further into Coffee Talk, I want to give a spoiler warning, and I would recommend playing this before listening to the episode. This was our game for the month of May. It was an alternate game, because we were going to play something else, and that did not pan out, so we played this instead. So technically, this is Lauren's pick. And I'm going to give a brief summary of the story for Coffee Talk. So the story of Coffee Talk follows a barista that you can name whatever you want, working in a coffee shop in a fantasy version of Seattle. We listen to the concerns of customers, and we even get to prepare some drinks. The customers we come across along the way are Neil, a alien that dresses like an astronaut, an astronaut. Gala, which is a werewolf, Freya, which just seems like a pretty normal human that works for the newspaper and is trying to write a novel. Hyde, a vampire model. Rachel, a... Well, I don't know what she's called, but she can turn into a cat. Like a Nico me Nico Minami or whatever. Her dad, which... I, does he have a first name? Yeah, it's like Hendry he, or Hendry. Yeah. Hendry. Okay. Agua, oh, which is like some sea creature girl that is a game developer that goes to university. Myrtle, she's a which mermaid. Is, is she a mermaid? She has like tentacles, doesn't she? Yeah, but I think like her profile thinks it's mermaid. Uh, go, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Myrtle, which is an orc that works for a gaming company, um, is dealing with Crunch. And Lua and Bailey's, which are a couple, one is an elf and one is a succubus, and their families do not like the idea that they are together. I think I covered everything. Oh, there's a cop too, isn't there? What's his name? Dory? Joji? Joji? I think it's like Joji. Joji that that's, has lactose intolerance. You can't drink <laughs> yeah. milk. <laughs> And then you meet a Probably bald like agent at one point. I don't know. I Is it Georgie? George. There's an R in there. So Yeah. yeah. Mm. I don't know. It's a it's a pretty large cast of characters. They're all very different. Um, have like their own stories. And you learn more about them as we go through each day. Um, this game takes place over the span of 14 days. Um, but I will end my section here and we can dive into gameplay and mechanics. So each episode, we like to break up the main points of the game we're playing. So starting with gameplay mechanics, Tons is going to tell us all about it for Coffee Talk. Most of this game, I would just classify as a visual novel. Uh, but you can progress by making drinks, like or hot drinks. Like if you get the correct drink, you get more uh, dialogue. That's like the only gameplay aspect, which is just selecting like, you know, uh, your your base and then like either a sweetener or like something to make it bitter. Then you have like a whole phone, which is a little like friend profiles. Like it was like Tamagotchi or to something like that. It shows like a, a brief information on each character. There's like a Spotify playlist thing. There's like your drink menu. Uh, then oh, what's the other one? Is it's it just the, options? No, it's the newspaper that she writes oh, the news. Yeah, the little newspaper articles. Uh, but then you just progress like the game is just, you know, you can either you could either toggle by hitting like a like a or space bar to like progress the next thing or put it on auto and just let it go. And then your mainly only interactions are just making the coffee cups or drawing in the lattes, uh, which is really neat. 
I was so bad at it. Oh, me too. I tried so <laughs> hard for a while. <laughs> I tried, tried to, to make a cat for the girl when she ordered like the cafe latte, and I was like, this would be cool, and it looked like a fucking skull. <laughs> now she's like, you know, close enough. The first drink yeah. that I got for Bailey's, I tried to draw a face, and by the end of it, it just looked like a blob of milk, and I was like, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get any better. Like, I tried, like, anytime somebody got, like, a latte, I'd try to do it. And I just... I sucked at it. But that's basically it for gameplay-wise. Just yeah, a narrative the, story game. The only other thing is that, like, you can fast food fast forward through dialogue if that you've it's only seen. If you, so yeah, if you if go back through the days to try to get like the drink stretch like correct or there's like certain things that you can go back to once you finish the game once and you don't have to sit and reread all the dialogue at the pace that it comes out originally which will help in a later point yeah so yeah gameplay mechanics pretty simple just a visual novel a lot of reading um and then a little bit of coffee making, drink making. Yeah, I, like I thought this was more on the line of like Valhalla, where like I felt like you actually had to make more drinks than that. But there's also like a bar, so it wasn't like a soup. It was like social, but not. But like then I got like weird, like oh BRB and Nixon drinks. This one was just very chill. We select three items, and then you can draw on it if it's like a latte. All right, so we'll move on to art design. Uh, Lauren, how about you tell us about the art design and direction for Coffee Talk? All right. Well, let's see. It's pixel art, which when I think pixel art, for whatever reason, I think like old, like, what is it? Like, right. Like old, like JRPG. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. That's what I think, but it's not like that. Like 18 so. bit, 16 bit, whatever. Yeah. That's what I would think, but it's not like that. It's just considered pixel art. But I uh, think like lo-fi videos on YouTube with like the coffee shop <laughs> and the rain. And that's basically what it is. At least the background wise. It's, uh, it's a very cozy atmosphere. I liked it. Got some people here. There was only like two people that were credited as just straight up like the artist or on the art team. We got Hendry Rosley. Which the like girl's dad's name was also Hendry, so I was like, is it named after him? He was the character artist and all the he did a lot of the art for the thing. He's worked for the studio since twenty eleven as an artist making their games ranging from like PC games, mobile games. Honestly, I couldn't find any other work they were credited with besides just with that company, all of those games that Corey listed especially. Uh, there was another one, Dio, last name I'll butcher, Mahisa, credited as art director for the game and a free and is a freelance illustrator. I couldn't find anything about this person though. Like they have an Instagram page. If you click on it and click on their like link tree or something, there's only two things. It's like the page where I found nothing basically, and a Patreon that also has nothing. So I was like, it was super weird. It was it was very difficult to find it. One thing that I did think that was cool when I was looking through, and I don't know if you guys would have seen if you would have went to the studio's website. If you go to their about and it lists all oh, of their members, yeah. they all have their own little like, oh, Character. this CEO's character is human creature and he's got his own stats. It's like everybody has their own. The one guy's the artist that was talking about that Hendry. He's a cyber ninja and he's got his own skills. And it's like just a bunch of them. Dreamcatcher, cat trainer looks like Pokemon trainer. The one guy looks like Iron Man for the production manager. It's really cool. They have their own little like cards, character cards basically. I'll have to check that out. I didn't see that when I was on there. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty neat. If you just hit about on their website, it'll, uh, under team members, it's got all of them like that. It's really cool. But yeah, that's that's about all I have. It was kind of difficult that there's only two, and there's really not much that I could find about the two. Like, the game looks really nice. 
Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. I liked the. It, it felt like I was, like I said, have one of those like lo-fi music videos on that you can just like just chill and vibe to. It looks yeah. good. Well, speaking of lo-fi, how about we go into sound and music? Uh, Dan, how about you tell us about the sound design and music for Coffee Talk? So the the music that's uh, playing during the game, it's just a bunch of lo-fi beats. Um, that's kind of it. Uh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> I love. Yeah, like I totally it, vibed. With it, it is really great. It yeah, is. yeah, yeah. It, it fits super well. Yeah, I mean, I didn't go into like the little Spotify like playlist thing. I just kind of let it always play its own thing. Same, but. Mm-hmm. Oh, I went into it because there was one song that I really liked, so I just kept like switching to it every so often. I just kind of let it do its thing. It's, it's, it's the game is very atmospheric. Like if you want to talk about sound, it's like Aqua when she walks away is like, the, like <laughs> nasty. Yeah, like, it makes like a bunch of like thump, like wet, <laughs> like, yeah, wet like, cloth. It's sound. like walking in wet <laughs> socks. Uh, yeah, yeah, like every time it made me laugh almost every time because it's the only thing that really. Because everybody else, like, the door opening is, like, done, and then I'm walking up, pulling the chair out is done very well. Hers is all that, then all here is, like, just, like, somebody got, yeah. like, yeah, wet boots or something. Yeah, it's like having wet socks in your sh- or wet socks and shoes, and you're, like, walking, like... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it throws you out. The it's the only one that does, it. like, a sound like that. I mean, outside of that, like you get like the coffee maker noises, like all of it's pretty standard. Oh. It's what you would expect to hear. No, it's really it's done really well. Like I think if it's it fits the game like perfectly because like it never threw me out off. Besides the whole aqua thing, everything else felt like you were actually kind of in a coffee shop. Did we mention this coffee shops only open at night? No. <laughs> uh huh. So that's that's kind of weird. I like it. Well, I don't remember anymore. I have a small brain. <laughs> Did you have anything else for music? <laughs> so the guy that uh, produced all the music, his name's Andrew Jeremy. And according to his Instagram, he's a uh, drummer, game developer, and music director. That's that's about all I can find on this guy. So he's uh hasn't done much. For a game that did so well, you think there'd be a little more on like the art and music people, like developers. They're, they're like a small like studio out of Indonesia, so it's like I'm looking yeah. through their website. They don't really have much about their games, really either. Mm-hmm. They their about section's pretty cool, but like like you can tell they're just still pretty small. Yeah, I think like they had all those other games. But I feel like this is their only like mainstream hit. Like, people probably like those other games, but this is, like, the one I feel like it kind of blew up and people were talking about. Yeah, well, I'm just, like, a hundred... Like, I'm not too sure about, like, the creative process about this game. Well, because the creator of this game has has now passed. He, He passed away, I think it was, like, March last year. So, I don't know who's, like... Because I know they were working on the sequel when it happened, and I just don't know what's... Because I, I was trying to find out more information about, like, the studio itself. And, like, you really kind of can't find anything besides, like, their small group out of Indonesia that kind of started around, like, 2009. And then this was their first, like, hit. All right. Well, let's move on to anything that made an impact for us. So this is when we just kind of open up the floor and talk about any parts or anything that really stood out to us. Does anyone want to start? That's so hard because the dialogue's pretty good most most of the time. I mean, Neil Neil is like a big standout part of the whole thing. He's uh, one of the aliens from Scary Movie Three. <laughs> Drinks or <Or-Kru's> Bruce finger. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I guess they pee through their finger, but close enough. I don't know. I really liked like his weird dialogue, especially when they started like he was like, "I'm going to Coachella." Couchella. 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 I don't care. I still rip it the way. <laughs> um, yeah, same. Dude. Same. I'd read it Coachella and be like, oh, yeah, Couchella. Oh, man. The articles <laughs> that came out, like, the articles between days were great. Oh, I never read them. I never saw oh, There was one that was talking about, like, how there was, like, a her- herpes, like, epidemic <laughs> at Coachella. 
I did see or that Couch one. Yeah, I, I read them like each side. It was pretty good. There was always yeah, like, a I little really, stab. I really thing. just like like Neil's like whole story because he's just there trying to like mate. And it's like he's always there just trying to learn how to talk to people. And it's like, man, I can learn a thing or two. You should get a job at a coffee shop. <laughs> oh, yeah, I should get a job at a coffee shop. <laughs> yeah, look yeah, at yeah. He's always just like, oh, I got to plant my seeds. It's like, all yeah. right, man. Not how you I approach like that a woman. Thing. Hey, everybody helped him out and they didn't like you beat him up. I don't know. It's all like his parts stand out a lot. I think like uh, for me, like the bailey's lua story Mm. where they have to deal with like what each person wants in a relationship and ultimately it comes down to them actually communicating at the end to reconcile but it's cool to just see like each each person's perspective as they talk to like hyde and gala Um, hyde's a little more direct with lua about her thought process how he kind of thinks it's dumb (laughs) um but I, I feel like that storyline is very relatable. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of mm-hmm. shows that a successful relationship, like one that you guys can both grow in, is one that starts with communication. Not just like, mm-hmm. well, I'll just, I'll just get, I don't care about my family. Like, it doesn't matter to me. And it's like, well, it matters to her. Right. So, like, it, it's an interesting concept. But I find, like, out of all the stories in this game, that's probably the most relatable. To like everyday life. Yeah, I would say like I mean, I mean it, that one's grounded. I mean, Rachel's and her dad. However you say Hendry, it, Hendry, Hendry, whatever the hell. Her Hendry. Name is. His is yeah. there's this relatable like father daughter, but like I could yeah, never relate like, to he, being famous like musician. Yeah, music, and and music exec, but like an overprotective dad, and then like the daughter who's like you know never you know the parents that never got along, and after the mom separated, they got along worse. But then you have like Jory or J- whatever his the police guy, the police guy, you know, interjecting and trying to like pull each one like one on one was pretty cool. Yeah, I th- I feel like that wouldn't be more impactful if I had children. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I just like I can't re- really relate to it, you know, because I don't have that experience. Um, but I've been in relationships, so like that's. You know, that's the one that attached to me. Um, did you have anything that attached to you, Lauren? Any scenario or storyline that you really like? Were like, I like this one. I mean, I thought all the storylines were good in their own way, but not storyline wise. But I liked the banter that you have with Freya because you can tell you're like much closer to her than anyone else. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was pretty good. It's like every. Every chance you have to fuck with her, you do. And I'm like, this is how a real, like, friendship would be. Like, yeah. it feels very relatable in that aspect, where I didn't feel like it was, like, fake. Like, I wasn't friends with this person. It's like, no, I felt like we had good, like, back and forth. Yeah, yeah which I feel tried like... to paint her as a bad guy every few seconds. Yeah, I feel like a lot of times it's like... A game will be like, oh, you're supposed to be close. It's like, well, I don't really feel like, you know, we're having an actual, like, we're close. It's just, I know we're close because you told me we're close. It's like, no, I felt it in that. Yeah. And they didn't really have to give it, like, too much of a backstory either. Uh Uh-uh. It's just, you know, she's regular. She's always there. Like, Mm -hmm. that's it. (laughs) Yeah. You make digs at each other. There, she's the only person in the game that you're supposed to give the wrong drink to. Yeah, you know, like when she's really tired, like day twelve or yeah. thirteen, she asks for espresso. If you can give it to her, and then it it does a story one direction. But if you give her a different drink that doesn't have coffee in it, she comes back the next day like, oh, I actually like slept like a full like eight hours yeah, I slept or whatever. For, she's like 12 hours. She's like, yeah. I slept for 12 hours. I woke up and like my writing was actually good. It wasn't like nonsense <laughs> forced out. And it's like, yeah, you needed sleep. And that's something like a close friend would do. Like if I was just your like right. barista, I'd be like, all right, here's your espresso. Like that means right. nothing to me. Did you have a storyline that stuck out for you, Dan? 
Uh, not really. Not not besides like Neil trying to learn how to talk to people. <laughs> he relates because he's <laughs> awkward, like Neil. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to talk to people. Is that your mission too? Yeah, that, that's my mission to plant my seed in people. Yeah, and then at the end, you <laughs> learn to just coexist. Yeah. No, but uh, I. I I thought it was a little bit funny at the one point. I think it was Freya and Hyde that were sitting there together. And Freya was talking about her her novel or something in the newspaper that she was working on about making the story about a world with just humans. And Hyde was kind of like, well, that'd be kind of boring. Like, they wouldn't really, like, hate each other. And she's like, well, may- well they'd probably hate each other just for, like, racial things like different languages different skin color and he's like yeah i don't think so it's like Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah right dude. spot on there developers yeah. spot on yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh the way- now you just said that the, the whole uh, just popped in my head that where rachel's dad comes in and he's like what's up young girl <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he comes off creepy as shit. <laughs> yeah. And then he like <laughs> moves. There's like a gap in between them, and then he moves closer. And they're like, "Please go back to the sea." Yeah. <laughs> like, and then Jory comes in. And they're like, "Oh, there's a creepy old guy here, like flirting with everybody." And they're like, "Who?" And he looks to his right, and they're like, "That's Rachel Day." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty funny. Oh, that's a good one. The gala stuff's interesting because he's a war veteran. They don't really mm. go too much into it, but like he had to go through like therapy, and he works at the hospital now because it helps him. I, I thought that's like a kind of neat way to build a character. It's also interesting that he has like fury, and you have to like figure out the drink that will prevent it or mm-hmm. it, yeah, soothe it rather. Or whatever. So Dude, like that stuff got me so confused. I just tried until he gave me like a name sometimes. Well, I, I swear he told you, like, what to make, and then I made it, it and I was just kind of like, oh, okay, and then he, like, Gino mentioned Ginger. making the drink again and with something else, and I was like, okay, I guess I have to combine something else this time, and then he's like, no, this isn't right, and I was like, what do you mean it's not right? You asked for this. You asked for something else. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, because, like, there's specific drinks for every, like, time they ask for one to get the, like, correct answer. But, like, how are you supposed to do it with, like, Neo when he comes in? He's like, anything. It's like, okay. Well, so, yeah, even Freya did that at one point. She's like, anything. Yeah, so it's like, you wouldn't know. It's, like, more experimental. And, like, when I went back through to finish, like, the drink orders, I just looked it up for those ones because I was like, I don't know what they yeah, want. Yeah. But it's, um, for Gala's drink, it's just the order in which you put in the ingredients. Oh. Okay. So it's like, it's tea, and then I think it's ginger, then milk gets you the right No, it's it's milk, then ginger. Is that the order? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so like that, it, 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 the drink changes based on the order in which you put ingredients in. I'm assuming it's because of quantity. You probably put more in, like you put your base, obviously, but then like you put more ginger if you put it in first. But if you put milk in first, then you would be more milk. I'm not sure for, you know, I'm not exact on that, but that makes the most sense to me when I was trying to wrap my yeah, head around it. Can it can be layer around it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so his is cool. Hyde's just kind of there for whatever. He eventually decides he wants to move there full time. He's a model. He's just kind of Gala's vampire. Right that's man. Been around. They've been friends for over like a, well, at that point, what was it like 80 years? Like, it's, it's 2020. Yeah, it's 2020. And they met in 1960. Yeah. I love how originally you're like like 1860, and they're like, well, we're old, but we're not that old. <laughs> yeah. Old <laughs> fuck. <laughs> but you get like them. There's this pretty good, like, we went over Bailey and Luna's. Aqua and Myrtle. Basically, Myrtle helps Aqua because she's making a game. She just helps her build confidence. Yeah, and she's like a refugee. Or not a refugee, but like a immigrant. Yeah, and like she can't see her family because they're not like the. I don't know. Is it U.S. 
Yeah, we're not letting in like the people from the Atlantic. There's like a whole article, like the articles will talk about like protests, like people fighting at the border. Yeah, so they're they're just kind of interesting. They kind of grow as like friends. At one point, I thought they were going to take it in like a actual relationship, which maybe it's hinted at. But I think I think they're all. I, I was gonna yeah. say I thought it was kind of hinted at. Yeah, but it like never like going on a vacation together. In like her picture at the end, where they're it's, yeah. their profile pictures now them too. I love that uh, they go to Couchella and they're like, "Yeah, we left in like two hours." Yeah, yeah. Just and then like, they went to like I don't know port whatever, and they like went on a historical tour. Yeah, it really cool. yeah, it was really cool. But like Myrtle is like a big orc. She wears like a football jersey, like rough and tumble, you know. And then Aqua's like really reserved. She's always like sorry, like you know, like she feels like she oversteps. So they're like a good duo. Like they work well together. Well, Myrtle says like something really cool in the sense of uh, when they're talking about like their deadline stuff, like because like Freya's talking about how like uh, what are they ta- they're talking about like she's talking with Aqua about like or somebody about publishing her thing and she was like how do you think I feel like I've worked secretly on a project for four years that no one knows about and it, each time we keep doing it something has to change and yeah she's, like I see none of that you guys get like. You know, you guys at least show off like your work is known or out there. It's like I can't even get a chance to put it out. And I was yeah. like, damn. She goes into like how every once in a while they help on like the the main series, but for the yeah. most part, it's like, yeah, I just work on stuff that nobody knows about. It was it full metal or full whatever. The, I'm trying to remember the game they. Do you make. remember what the game's called? I don't for? remember. Uh, no, I know it's like FM. C or FMG or something. FMC. Full metal something. Full metal carnage or something. I think it's. I, I just like at the end that Bailey's solid. like, they're talking about the movie. Yeah, they're talking about the movie coming out. They're talking about like full metal games conflict. Games. Conflict. And then Bailey's like, or at the end, like Bailey and Lua are, Lua are gonna go watch the movie. She's like, he's a huge fan. Like, oh, you just missed like, <laughs> yeah, like Myrtle a who's. Works on it. That works on it, yeah. So, like, all the characters kind of tie together. They also build relationships with one another. So, that's pretty cool. And then at the end, Freya writes a novel about the people in the coffee shop. Yeah. And depending on how you, you know, answer and do the drinks and stuff, it uh, determines if her book sells or not. Mine, they, you know, they sold. Well, yeah, there's an option where, like, if you don't do it right, like, she publishes it, but like nobody buys it. Yeah, that's how mine went. I think that's about <laughs> it. Um, let's move into time to completion. How long do you guys think this took you to finish it? I'm not. I don't know because I played on the Switch, but I would assume around four hours, somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, that's probably how long it took me. Yep, yep. They probably skipped all dialogue. Just, just... No, no, no. So, <clears throat> you know, I finished it yesterday, I think. Was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Um, And uh, I kind of went to sleep, and I took a nap nap for like two hours, <laughs> three hours. And I left my computer on the entire time, like on the game. So my my time to complete <laughs> isn't like exactly right, but it's it's... I would say like five ish hours compared to uh eight hours and thirty one minutes. <laughs> yeah. Mine was four four hours and twenty five minutes. Lauren, what do you think? We finished um, you finished like uh, five minutes before I did. Yeah, I was thinking about three, three and a half, honestly. Yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. Somewhere on there. Yeah, you finished yours. You like sent the text to our group message, like, "Hey, I finished the game," and then I was like, "Me too!" Like, like right after. So yeah, we were real close to each other. I remember looking over at your screen, and I think you were typically at one point you ended up like a day behind me or something, but it wasn't any more than that at any point. I don't think. Yeah, it's probably one of the fifteen times I had to let the dogs out. Yeah, Man, that was like my big issue. It was like that first night I went to play, like people were shooting fireworks off, and it's like, oh god. 
<laughs> All right. Before we move into the back half of the episode, is there anything else you guys want to talk about for Coffee Talk? I think we covered most of it besides going through like the whole story. Yeah, I still think it's uh, worthwhile for somebody to play it. Like we just kind of touch base. There's a lot of good dialogue oh, yeah. in there. There's a lot. There's a, a big there's a good story. Yeah. Like even us just going through some of them and giving a brief summary of like some things. We never the, went into the full detail. The build is good to get you there. Yeah. Um all right. So let's move into recommendation. Each episode we go around and find out if we would recommend the game we're playing and why or why not. So starting with Dan, would you recommend this game and why or why not? Uh I mean I would I would say yeah. If you if you enjoy like visual novels and stuff, I'm sure you would enjoy this one. But it's like don't go into expecting like much stuff to do, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if yeah. you can read that it's a visual novel, <laughs> expect that. Because, yeah. you know, that's exactly what it is. I mean, there's a little interaction with the drink making, but... Yeah, no real choices or nothing, though. Yeah. Just a story being read. Hey, you get to pick your name. True. Which I just yeah. left my mark. Yeah, you could have been pee-pee poo-poo for all you wanted. Could have been. So, yeah. so what did we land on, Dan? We are recommending. Oh, I landed on a yeah. All right, cool. A yeah, a yeah, yeah, about, boy. What about you, Tom? Yeah, I really liked it. I felt like it was uh really good. I kind of wanted more of it, to be honest. Well, there's a second one. Go play it. It just came. Yeah, it just came out. Yeah, like episode <laughs> two or whatever. Yeah, it came out in April. Yeah, it's uh. It's really good. I like it. Um, yeah, if you like a story, it's kind of being read to you. Like, you can just put it on auto and just kind of chill and go at your own pace, or you can put it on, like, instant text and then just kind of read at your... Like, I, that's what I did, read at my own pace. Which was very slow. No. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Lauren? Would you recommend this game? Yeah. I mean, I wanted to play the second one right after I finished the first one. I thought it was good. I, I like visual novels, though, so I kind of figured I would have liked it. It's right up my alley with that kind of stuff. And I would also recommend this. I actually like this way more than I thought I would. Um, Just because sometimes with visual novels, they kind of expand the plot for no reason. But I think having such a big group of characters that they took the time to develop made this i was like intrigued the whole time like oh i was like well, who's gonna show up this day and like what are we gonna learn yeah. about them or their story yeah it became whatever. like a weird like you know you yeah there was not like a like a big overarching story it's just a story that you're like oh yeah who's coming in and what do we find out about them because after we talked to mm -hmm. them last they had an issue and did they resolve that issue Right, it's like, oh, this is where we left oh. off three days ago because we haven't seen them. And then it's like, now we're going to get all this composition for their story and what's been happening. So I, I really like that aspect of it. The music in this is really good. It's just vibe music. So I just got to listen to it like while I was playing it on the <laughs> Switch. So good time. I really like the art. I think it's clean. It's nothing crazy, but I think it looks good. So overall, I'd recommend this. Price-wise, it's weird. Like, I paid 12 bucks for it, which I think is worth it night and day. Uh, but it is on Game Pass, so you can play it on there for free. That's where I would have played it if uh, my Game Pass wasn't all screwed up. Yeah, it, it also is on sale quite often on, like, Steam and stuff. So, if you're not too sure, maybe wait for it to go on sale or Game Pass. If, Second uh, one's also on Game Pass now. You could do both of them. Look at that, Lauren. You can just play the second one for free. I pre-ordered that collector's edition that if I don't get it, because Amazon sucks, <laughs> I will be so mad. Hey, so I have two questions. Go ahead. Does this game want you make you want to be more social? Yeah. Uh, do you want to drink tea or coffee? No. Uh, I do <laughs> yes. I, I will drink iced tea, but not hot tea. I will not drink coffee because it's disgusting. And no, I no. <laughs> I drink coffee 
And I started drinking hot tea with one of my coworkers at work now. So, yes. <laughs> but social-wise, social no way. Because I wouldn't have this same experience. The people I would meet would be pretentious. And they'd be, like, snobby and annoying. Maybe they wouldn't get... be so bad if you had a late-night coffee shop. That's what I'm saying. Like, well, we got, we got <laughs> early morning people that are like, I just need my coffee so I can go to work. And then they yeah. you know, they'd probably push you over and hit you with a chair or something. <laughs> like you're dumb, spit on you, <laughs> yeah. spank you. Yeah, it'd be all, it would just be a bad experience for everyone involved. Mm -hmm. But, no, how about you, Tunza? Do you want to drink a big old cup of coffee now and talk to a bunch of random people at a coffee shop? About your life and your goals. <laughs> Like, am I a customer? Like, it's like yeah, yeah, you're marketing. a customer. You you don't own a coffee shop. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of the scenario. I don't know. Some of those drinks didn't sound too bad, and like, I I've always kind of wanted to get into tea, but can never do it. Also, I would and never like, drink hot milk. That doesn't sound good to me at all. Oh yeah, like milk, you know, just yeah. milk and just heat it up. It makes sense for the cat, but uh, there's some of those drinks that didn't sound too bad. I also don't know what just tea is though, because they have like green tea and tea. Well, yeah, tea like typically it, it, infuses with whatever you mix with it. Yeah, um, so it's like I was just like, oh yeah. It's, I mean, <laughs> some of those drinks, I was like, oh, this wouldn't be bad. I can't remember what that one was called, but I would try them, I guess. It made me think of all those people because I think I just was talking to you, Corey, about like those people that are super into coffee, and this is like this is what this game is. Yeah, I just over like I don't think it would be possible. Like this is such a chill coffee shop where people kind of hang out. Like it's literally a dive bar, but for coffee. Mm -hmm. Like where you just see, like, the same regular regulars... beer talk. No, or alcohol no, talk. No, no, not the same. But I'm just saying, <laughs> like, the concept of this game is like it's a late night coffee shop. It feels more like a dive bar. You get the same regulars, basically. Mm -hmm. At a coffee, if I go to a coffee shop, there's probably 30 people inside of it. The barista's like, "What do you want? <laughs> like, get away from me!" <laughs> and they have like a 47 cars in the drive through, so they're not gonna like the bar. The barista probably has no idea who you are. Even if you oh, show yeah, up regular. every day. No, even if you show up yeah. every day. Because it's just too busy. Like, the environment is just too busy. That's why it's a yeah. late night one. So you can I mean, if you go to, saying. like, a smaller coffee shop, like a local one, maybe it'd be... Our, our local coffee shop knows me by name. Well, that's oh, good. See, regular. Hmm? That's good. A little locally owned. Yeah, but I also go so early when they first open that I'm one of the only people there in the morning. Yeah, I think that's what makes this Mornings. coffee shop like. Blah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dan was the nighttime coffee. Shop. Yeah, what you, you, what you drink, me, Dan? What you, like water? Hey, water. Can I get, can I get water. a glass of water? Hot <laughs> cocoa? Can I? No, they they do have hot chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, they, they did, did have hot chocolate. Yeah. This game. yeah, I could have went for some, like, try some tea. All yeah. right. Did you guys want to do Let's reviews? Let's open a late night coffee shop. Uh, there's a couple funny ones. Yeah, we can read some reviews like the, just about the game. I like this one that says, I serve coffee with latte art of dicks. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it does. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I didn't even think about it. <laughs> Am I growing up? Yeah, I, <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I do like this one that says, I want to fuck the alien. I did see that. <laughs> <laughs> Plant your seed in me. Yeah. I think they censored it and I just read it and I'm like, yeah, we're, we're adults, I'll swear. I like this one that says, recommended, chill, relaxing, some lore, what's not to like? Eight out of ten. I'm like, you don't put a single thing that <laughs> it was no negative, no, but eight out of ten. What's not like? But yeah. it's an eight out of ten. I like this. Okay. Just espresso for your depresso. <laughs> nice. I want that on a t-shirt. Yeah. 
I like this one. Therapy is expensive, but this game isn't. 10 out of 10. (laughs) (laughs) This this one says, I love coffee talk. I wish gay people were real. (laughs) What? What? I'm confused. (laughs) Is it bad that every bad, bad review, I feel like, is the same account just posting on a different account? Because they're like, they're just a bunch. Like, they're, it's never like, hey, I just really didn't like this. It's like full pages. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not even, I don't even want to read it. <laughs> yeah, every bad review is like four paragraphs. Every good review is like 10 words. <laughs> <laughs> is it primarily good or bad? Good. Primarily good. That's good. I, I enjoy The fish it. is kind of fine. <laughs> <laughs> not a mermaid. His tentacles. Where, where her thing said mermaid. No nope, tentacles. <laughs> it looks like she has like a like an octopus wrapped around her. She's a mermaid. I'm pretty sure. But Maybe it's her friend. It's her pet. Feet. It's like a parrot. How she do you know? Because she doesn't hop out. How do like, you know? Because we see her leave. You see her shoot no, out. Know. Well, you hear her leave, and it's like. Ksh- like she's yeah. walking, not ee, or whatever no, a wet sure tail would sound like if you slid is, it. I'm pretty sure her sound is like wet, per, like feet walking on it, just like. Okay, so Play it back. looking at this, <laughs> she uh, she has the orange tentacles. It's not like attached to her or anything. Like okay. she, she, those are her body parts. But it looks like she's like a mermaid, but with tentacles instead of like a fish tail. She's just like a fish yes, man. I don't know. The, fish man out. The, oh, where's the one piece? Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. Let's uh, find out what we're playing for the month of June. Tunza, you have that pick. So how about you tell everyone what we're playing and why you chose it? You want me to tell you my two choices and what I pick, what it lands on? Or do you want me to do it? Just, right? just figure out what we're playing first, okay. and then tell yeah, us what we're okay. playing, and then tell us what the other option could have been. We're playing Ori in the Blind Forest. Sick. Yeah. Uh, the game was other uh, game was Mirror's Edge. Yeah, I've never <laughs> yeah, played Ori yeah. in the Blind Forest. I've but played Ori in the Blind Forest before, but I've not all the way through. I've I've played a little bit, of, or I've beat Mirror's Edge, but. Yeah, I, I have finished, this craving of playing it. I've I've played Mirror's Edge. I've never played Ori, so I'm pretty excited about that. Oh well, yeah, I wanted to switch it up. I was like, I had the like one. It was a little last minute because I didn't know what we were doing. Because mm-hmm. I, I thought you wanted the like a full game war. Yeah, but then I was pretty content with uh, coffee talk. So I was like, this is fine. Okay, yeah, I mean, either way, we're. Yeah, and then I was looking at like the list real quick, and I was like, I've been debating on playing Mirror's Edge again recently. And then Ori, I was like, it's 10 hours, and I would like to finish it. And it's something we kind of haven't played. Mm-hmm. So that's why I picked that one. And then, well, then I just flipped the coin right there. Great. I had a lot of fun today talking about Coffee Talk on NLGC. But before we go, we wanted to share where you can find us online. First, we have a YouTube channel called NerdLag, where we'll be uploading some great content. So make sure to subscribe for the latest videos. We have a Facebook page at NerdLag Game Club. Make sure to like the page so you can get the latest news about the podcast. You can also find us over on Twitter at NerdLag, where we share some of the latest gaming news and stuff we find interesting. And lastly, we have a Discord at NerdLag, where you can talk to us in voice chat And join in some discussion about everything nerdy, like video games, anime, movies, and chat with like-minded people. If you'd like to join, ask for an invite. Uh, We also want to thank everyone that tuned in for this episode. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you share it with your friends. And also follow us on Spotify. It really helps. On to the final credits. At the end of each episode, we just take a few minutes to talk about anything we've been playing. Or just anything we want to talk about in general that is not related to the game. So is there anything you guys want to talk about? Yeah, I feel like there was something I was going to bring up, and I don't remember what it was. Mm. Shout out to Lauren for still recording with us, even though she states away. Yeah, I'm in Tennessee. <laughs> Dan didn't know she left. When did she leave? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Dan, you haven't noticed I'm not home? Well, that's crazy. Oh my god, you knew I wasn't there. Well, yeah, I'll be in, I'll be in Tennessee. I won't be home till Friday at like midnight. But I'm here for work for a couple days, and I'm recording in a hotel room, so that's pretty mm. cool. <laughs> I'm trying to think of if any when like I I feel like we didn't record that long ago. Yeah, I mean they're every like two mm. weeks, so. Unless you yeah, have an eventful no, no. two weeks, there's not. Well, I, I don't think I played anything in a week besides the podcast game. With the podcast game, I'm almost at the end of Evolution Worlds. I'm in the last dungeon, about halfway through it. So, shouldn't be too much longer to finish that up. Move on to the next GameCube game. Um, outside of that, me and Lauren watched Dr. Stone up through. We finished season two. Yep. So that's nice. pretty cool. You, watch, you guys got the movie? We didn't watch the movie. No, we didn't watch yeah. the movie yet. Or season yeah, three. What's done of season three. season three. Yeah. I'm sorry, season um, three. But I really like it. It's uh, a shonen that I can actually get behind. Mm-hmm. The characters are really cool. And I just like that they're like developing the weirdest shit. And it never turns out exactly how he, like, imagines it. He's like, oh, I'm going to build this cell phone. He shows you, shows you, like, a modern-day cell phone, but then it's, like, it's just a big, like, mobile pack. Yeah, like a mobile, like... <laughs> it's, like, a, basically, like, the equivalent of, like, cups on a string, but on a... Oh, you, you would have seen, like, his, like, paper mache tank or whatever. Yeah, yep. Which, pretty cool. Like, I, I like that everything ends up being a little bit different. Um... I'm glad that we watched it, so we'll have to do the movie soon. I think the title of it is Ryu Sui, so I'm assuming it's about. I was remember I was telling you that the dude that voices Bakugo voices a character. That's what that character's name is. Oh, okay. So it's probably like I mean, I've watched the movie. I just didn't, didn't just get you ready for season three. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming so. I don't know if I've even seen the movie, to be honest. Well, maybe it's we'll like a it. just set up thing. Yeah. I'm fine with watching it. What about you, Dan? Have you done anything recently? Dude, there's something I wanted to bring up about playing or doing. There's, 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 one, there's one we can't talk about. Remember. Well, yeah, there, there's one we can't talk about. Yeah, yeah. You've been playing that... Yeah. Uh... What's that game? Star Train Toki Toki. Yep, Star Train. Yep. <laughs> Toki oh, Star oh, Rail. <laughs> <laughs> Where the Toki Toki come from? Yeah. There's a T in there somewhere, right? <laughs> I mean, no. no. no? And Star? I mean, in Star. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, isn't it? Isn't there like let like words? Ankai, like Star Rail. Oh man, I'm totally off. Yeah. <laughs> See how much yeah, I care about that game. <laughs> <laughs> this is like uh, the equivalent of like games when I can never remember the name of them, so that I just start calling them something different, and now I can't not call it that. It, it's yeah, it's like how I picture characters. I don't ever remember anybody's names. I just there's a characteristic and like slime fuck from that you know slime slime anime <laughs> that I can never remember the name of. This it reminds me of like when we were doing like Horizon Zero Dawn. It was like Dawn Horizon. Oh. <laughs> like we we could never remember what the order of the words were. <laughs> it was for the sequel, right? <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn. For the, uh, yeah, we that whole series we just threw up. <laughs> it made me think of the game. Well, it made me think of the movie. Um, what's the the Second Hobbit movie, because uh, I used to call oh. it the Defecation of Smog. Oh yeah, the Defecation of Smog. <laughs> that shit of Smog. Yeah, Defecation of Smog. Yeah, we got that. It's over there. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just... over there. <laughs> so stupid. Dan, remember what you were gonna talk about yet? Nope. I thought about it this morning too, and I woke up. And I just... Disappeared. I don't know. 
I'll never remember. I'll remember like a week from now and be like, oh yeah, that was it. Is it about something you were playing? Something you did? I I, I don't know. PlayStation Showcase? No, I didn't pay attention to that. Was it excited for Alan Lake and yeah. Not about Pokemon Home. I don't know. It's definitely not a raft update. (laughs) Oh yeah, we're we're done with raft. We're done with raft. We haven't started any other game yet. Not like story wise, no. But we played like Played Up and Hunt again. Oh, that was fun. Played some of that uh, No Time to Relax. That was fun. Oh, that game. <laughs> I need to print out those, uh, print out the papers for that. What? Uh, you mean. Uh, Wait, keep talking that... and nobody explodes. Oh, yeah, was that the game we were just talking about? No, that no time to relax was the game that's like life, kinda. Oh, yeah, that was actually really good. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what the fuck are you writing? What do you need to print papers out? For? <laughs> uh, we pl- we I, it was was it that same night? <laughs> no, it was the day before. Day before we played uh, the uh, keep talking and nobody explodes. The it was a bomb defusal you. game. Yeah. Yeah, and Dan's yeah, like, yeah. well, obviously, because I don't have the game, but I, my, I have to read instructions and we have to solve puzzles based off like clues he gives. Oh, yeah, did well, all right. I not guess. good. Not good. Oh, I hey, have two different answers. <laughs> <laughs> we did all right. It was we, not we got, good. Like, three bombs diffused in like two hours, maybe an hour and a half, something like that. Oh, like full puzzles. Like we got. Well, yeah. We got parts diffused each time. There was each just like bomb a bomb is um, five minutes, and uh, yeah. And yeah. there's like up to like what four to six puzzles. Uh, the ones we were doing, I think the most. Oh, we didn't even get to the hard ones, so like. <laughs> yeah, Lauren, you think we'd be good at this? Mm-hmm. One, if, if, oh. if my thing is. Maybe. We just started. I didn't even look at the manual before we went. We just went right into it. So I'm like, yeah, learning like, and like we need we need like wires and it'd be like a minute later, like, all right, we got wires. All right, all right. Yeah, because I'm like going through the guide, I'm like scrolling past. I think it'd be better if you print it out. Yeah. And yeah. like the PDF online. Cheating. No, it says you can print it out. No, nope, cheater loser. Oh, you're a cheater. I didn't realize that it's the same <laughs> formula, whether I up scroll on the mouse or flip a fucking page. Nope, you have two things in front of you instead of just one. It tells you to print it out! <laughs> All right, jeez, Hulk. All right, that's it for this week's episode. Or it, this yeah, it is. Uh, we had this little <laughs> extra time at the end of the episode. We didn't talk about too much. Tons of angry. He's going to go flip his coffee table now. Uh, yep. Let us know what you thought about Coffee Talk, if you've played it or played it along with us. And we will see you guys for the next episode. Thank you for listening. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.